the building of Lagos. That something happened yesterday. A uh, former president of Nigeria of an older generation dropped there. Uh, and uh, uh, we wish him the best wherever he is now. But that is to signal to people of his generation that the country must have brand new leaders to take Nigeria in a different direction from where we are today. We had to come late to this place today, not because we wanted to come late, but because it was difficult to drive from one destination in Lagos to the other. A journey that could have taken 30 minutes maximum it takes you three hours, and you still haven't arrived at your destination. Sometimes you reach almost the destination, the road is blocked, you have to go back again and start in another direction. That should not the way our country should be. Our country should, by now should have overcome some of these issues. In fact, one of my greatest pain for is that the president of Nigeria at this time is still discussing how to construct roads, electricity, you know, things that we should have taken for granted. Our degree of, uh, of uh, conversation, or the substance of our conversation politically should have honestly exceeded the level that we are in now. This is like in that kindergarten conversation. You know, we are still discussing, oh, the president wants to construct roads, he wants to provide water, he wants to provide schools for children. No, these are things that ought to have been institutionalized by now. The president is supposed to be speaking at levels that is higher than where we are now. But it's okay, we are still there, but it is obvious that we need new hands, we need new ideas, we need fresh brains, have our country taken from where it is now. As long as we are ground zero. And we need to move very fast to be able to catch up with our neighbors. We're not even talking about big neighbors in Europe and America, we're talking about our neighbors here in Benin Republic. It is easier for someone who lives in Baragui to go to Benin Republic and transact business than to come to Nigeria to transact business. There was a time we passed through this place to go and have a rally in Balagri. I was traveling that same night. We left at 7 a.m. We didn't reach Balagri until about 12, 12, 12 uh, uh, midday. We reached the place. We finished the rally about 2. For a flight that was taking place at about 10 or 5 p.m. We got somewhere in Lagos and had to take our car to go to the airport. We couldn't make it if we hadn't changed our mode of transportation. That's how bad things are, and it's all over Nigeria. But we have had the good fortune of being accepted across the country. We have traveled extensively because, honestly, part of our problem is that a lot of our leaders don't understand Nigeria. Because most of them have never met the real Nigerian people. They have never met them in their places of worship. They have never met them in their places of work. They have never met them in their places of hardship. They only pay lip service to what they think is Nigeria. That is why anytime they discuss Nigeria, they discuss, they discuss it from an esoteric point of view. It's a very special problem that only a few people understand. That's why they throw out jabs at us and say Nigeria is complex. Nigeria is very difficult to understand. You know? Nigeria is big. What we have found out in nine months is that we see that Nigeria is not big. Nigeria is not complex. But our leaders don't understand Nigeria enough to know how big it is. So make sure that all the things you stand for, that we incorporate it into governance, all the people you stand for, the helpless, the hopeless people, are allowed to enjoy the benefit of what you have always passed for across not only here in Lagos but across Nigeria and by extension across the world. And we also hope that you will help us spread the message to all our people that what you have been asking for, there is a friend of yours, there is someone in flesh and blood who live totally everything you believe in, who is here to run for the presidency of Nigeria. I want to thank you for one more thing. 
that at this time they are not looking at us from who we worship or how we worship. You have embraced us openly without asking us anything else but the purity of our intentions. And we believe that all of us will reach our own promised land next year, inshallah. So thank you so much. Thank you for receiving us. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for doing what you do for Nigeria. And you will understand that if we are here seated with you, standing in front of you today, the whole of Nigeria appreciates what you do. And I want to encourage you to keep doing what you do. Not only pro, but every musician in the house. Don't let your voice drop. Continue to fight for social justice, regardless of who is affected, whether they are Muslim, Christians, whether they are Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. Keep doing what you're doing and keep doing what is right at all times. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. President, sir. Thank you, sir. I like to. Say that uh, we are indeed humbled by the kind words you've, you've spoken to us. It's quite unusual that um, uh, men of timber, caliber, and caterpillar will come and recognize us. And that is the difference between your generation and generations past. We know. Those who uh, took the mantle of leadership in this country at the age of 35. Yes. Those who are ministers at the age of 29. And we also wonder why and when, when will it be the time of the youth? Mm. Uh, in France, and uh, I think there's some of that. Canada, too. In, in France and Canada. Young men who are under 40. How, how old is Macron? This. And these are advanced countries. That is why we are encouraged with your candidacy. We are encouraged by, your, uh, by, uh, by the fact that you have come to volunteer yourself. This is sacrifice. In the past, what our politicians knew was um, how to deceive the people, how to exploit the people, how to uh, siphon more than 90% of the resources of the nation into their own pockets. Nigeria today, only just one percent, those referred to by Professor Senka as the tiny cabal, yeah. only one percent of the population is controlling 85 percent of, of the resources, leaving only 15 percent to the remaining population of 99 percent. We that is why all of us now, all the poor people, the poor teachers like me. We keep struggling among ourselves, thinking we are enemies of the one another. Hmm. Whereas religion is not our problem. No. And our ethnicity no, is no. not our problem. But politicians throw this into our midst as bait and cause us to keep fighting among ourselves. Because they know that the moment we get together, we are united and we understand uh, who our enemies truly are, they will be finished. Yes, that's true. Mr. President, sir, I'd like to say that um, uh, Mori, Muslim Rights Concern, we believe that, we believe that a good Muslim mm. or a good Christian can make all the difference mm. in leadership. We do not believe somebody has to be a Muslim to lead this country. It is not his religion we want. The fact that we are Muslims does not mean that we just want Muslims there. No. 
It must be, we, we, we want true democracy. We want the, 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 the rule of law. We want good governance. The, uh, we want the redistribution of the wealth of the nation. Things must go around. And uh, I like to lay emphasis on this, and I do hope that uh, you will remember uh, when you come, when you become the leader of this country. On Tuesday there will be there will be a holiday because it is first January. That's right. It has always been so. First January has always been recognized. Sir, this is one of the grievances of the Muslims. Mm. It's just that the approach of those who have been fighting for it has been totally wrong. They've been misguided. Mm. Some have, some have uh, adopted violence. Mm. Uh, actually, in, in Muri, our our motto is dialogue, no violence. We believe that every rational person should condemn terrorism. That's right. Because when you when you plant bombs somewhere, you do not know if little children will be there, yeah. if pregnant women will be there. And violence is a square peg. Violence is a square peg. Justice is a round hole. Mm. Violence cannot lead to justice. It can only compound the problem. These are our beliefs. First January is the clear day. The Muslims also have their first general. And we had our first general before the colonial masters came and enslaved us. And if the colonial master had been fair, since the issue is Islam had been in this country before Christianity by 800 years, because Islam came in 1085, in the 11th century, 1085. And Christianity came in 18. Preached under the Agassiz tree in Badal. And we, in fact, the Muslims have been practicing Sharia all along. But when the colonial master came, the Jundist sense of justice of the colonial master was to just uh, stamp out and eliminate all, all, uh, all, uh, 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 all signs, all symbols of Islam. Mm. As, uh, if, if they had really united us, no matter what religion they want church to introduce, if they didn't take what belongs to us and they left us as free men, we, it would not be as bad as it is now. But ever since the colonial master left in 1960 and we became a republic in 1963, there should have been some review of the situation in this country. These, these were say, issues that should have been addressed in some. Uh, national conferences that have been held. That's right. But the the leaders, those who are in power, the, uh, each time they had a national conference and one people come forward and uh, you know uh, 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 and, and speak up, they were not ready to treat such issues. Mm. They never allowed the Muslims to tender their uh, you know, their rivers. Yeah. So I think older people like you sir, in the government led by you we are expecting and we are demanding, sir, that um, these grievances be looked into. You cannot just, uh, no president can just give us, you know, on a platter of gold. Yeah. But since we've been asking and we've been writing petitions and we've been making them, uh, we've been making presentations, we want to. towards that direction. Yeah. Please ask the Christians what do they want? We don't I don't want to fight my Christian neighbor. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 in the South here in particular, particularly in the South yeah. yes. it will be uh, self destructive <laughs> to start yes, to, for Muslims to start fighting Christians. And Christians to start fighting Christians. We should realize that. But then uh, that does not mean Fairness and justice should, uh, should, should, should be overruled, should be ignored. So, uh, as we say that, 
as a request from you, sir, that we will want First Muhara to be declared as a work free day. And that what is that in the year? Good. That, uh, like it, this year, it was in, I think it fell in October. Yes. So sometime around October. Yes. October this year. So, and another October is coming. Other Octobers are still coming. And you are going to witness many, many more yes. by Allah's friends. Yes. So, we will want uh, issues like this to be addressed. Every time you have the opportunity to get into power, yes. we also have. Another uh, an issue that Munich has been uh, fighting for for about three years now, three or four years now. There are some 54 soldiers who are in prison now, somewhere in the box. Fellow Fallon is their lawyer. Yeah. These 54 soldiers are not criminals. They refused to fight Boko Haram in my because they were supplied with poor weapons. Yes. And Boko Haram had sophisticated weapons. Yes. And our army generals had greedily uh, and corruptly diverted money Men intended for yes. the purchase of arms. These men were rounded up, they were tried, uh, they were commercial, yes. somebody, and sentenced to death. Pressure, we kept writing. We don't know a single one of them. I've never seen one of them. I don't know their names. But I believe where there is, wherever there is injustice, there can be no peace. Yes, yes. Justice is the soul of peace. We don't know if there are Muslims among them. We don't know if there are Christians among them. But I do know they are Nigerians. And we in Mori, we believe in just humanity. Yes. It is not the religion of any person that matters, but uh, the fact that we are all uh, children of Adam. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, Mr. President, sir, we beseech you to remember these 54 soldiers who are languishing in jail. Mm -hmm. We have petitioned the president, we have petitioned the vice president, we have not gotten any response, any positive response yet, and we have issued more than eight different statements over the years mm -hmm. on these. Uh, uh, soldier, because we believe these were men who who fought for Nigeria. They were the battle front. They have seen the war in its worst uh, aspect. Mm. And uh, for an offense they did not commit, they are now all in jail. I think one of the problems of Nigeria is that our 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 justice system is done. Yes, it is too slow and. Uh, I think in Nigeria today, justice is still for sale. Yes. For the highest leader. leader. Uh, for the rich. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. President, I assure you once again on behalf of all our members in the Muslim Rights Concern that um, we will be behind you, we will be there for you each time you, you need us to come forward. And uh, even before, whenever we see injustice being perpetrated, whether on you or any other candidate or any or any other Nigeria, like we used to do, we will come with our humble intervention. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you. So, uh, let me quickly address, uh, Prof, uh, on your request. It was as if you were listening to us like yesterday, when we, we do a nightly broadcast, and I was having an interview. Uh, because I was interviewed by reference and he said, how can you guarantee us to go and build our church in Kaduna without molestation? I said, That's, I will, because the government will protect everybody regardless of who they worship and what they worship. I said, but don't forget that there are Muslims who also want to build mosques in Elijah Seldo as well. Yeah. Their rights must be guaranteed. Yeah. Yes. And there might be somebody who wants to build a shrine. In some bizarre forest, That's their right. rights must be guaranteed as well. It was as simple as there. And I'll tell you that your New Year work free day will be guaranteed without question. It's, we don't need to waste too much time. It's going to be an executive order. Greatest Mauritius! Greatest Mauritius! Greatest Mauritius! Greatest Mauritius!
The second request regarding the 54 soldiers, uh, that one you don't need, need to even worry about because I was the one who started reporting on their case. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. reporters and carried your press releases about them. In fact, when they were brought to Lagos and they were kept on the ground at the point, we were reporting on it. That forced them to remove them from underground and start feeding them. We know about these soldiers. We know their plights. We know also that our army generals, and this will help us address the bigger question of even the Boko Haram war. That it used to be a crisis, but now it has become a business. That's why Boko Haram is not going anywhere anytime soon. Yes. When they started, and you should listen to me, when this whole Boko Haram started, Muslims were put in a corner as if they are the ones who brought Boko Haram to Nigeria. Of course, there are also mistakes on the part of some of our Muslims, but they were feeling defensive about it. And I said to a lot of them at that time, I said, don't defend what is not in your religion, even if someone is accusing you of it. So, God said, you know, Boko Haram is the Muslim agenda to finish Christians. But now, when you look at the balance of casualties, more Muslims have been killed by Boko Haram than Christians. Because it wasn't a Boko Haram issue, it was a function of terrorists who are using scriptures. This time, unfortunately, the Islamic scriptures to perpetrate evil against defenseless citizens. And you did a fantastic job of condemning Boko Haram and their, you know, uh, their style of operating. And you said this is not Islam. I recall getting those regular updates from you and publishing it on the Sahara. So, so those soldiers will be freed and paid their salaries from the day they were arrested. There's no question about it. What we need to do is to equip soldiers so that they have the courage and the confidence to fight the enemies of the states. When you don't provide them with the weapons and the support and the motivation and the incentives to fight, it is you, the commander-in-chief, that should go to jail yes. for not doing your job. Not the soldiers who are to run when they couldn't withstand the superiority of fire. But the rap tag, I mean, can you believe that the Nigeria that ended the war in Liberia and Syria no, did not finish Boko Haram? So there is something there that will be resolved as soon as we change the inept leadership at every level. But with due respect, our commander in chief has to be changed. Because he's not commanding anything. No command is not the commander in chief of anything. I'm not sure that our president knows what he's doing. And for those of us who covered the election in 2015, the expectation was high. Nobody was asking whether it was, in fact, it was Christians that were saying that nobody should accuse Buhari of, you know, not letting him become president because of uh, his Islamic background. Everybody supported him, but today, Christians and Muslims have been left in the dust by either policies, inactivity, inefficiency, inadequacies of the government. And that's why we are boldly coming out that they should do themselves a favor, leave the country alone for a new generation of leaders to take over the leadership of the country. Yes. It cannot be worse than this. It has to be better than we are now. Yes. Yes. When we came to Baraguay, and I'm not digressing last time, we were asking that the people of Balagre are very nice. They could have not seceded from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you look at the moment we made that statement, they rushed and awarded the contract for the road. But I tell you, they won't do the road. It's an election gimmick. Balagre should not have only one road going to, from Lasso to Balagre. There should be a coastal highway beside the Atlantic Ocean that links from Balagre to Apapa. So that if you don't want to have anything to do with my two and Lagos, you just go straight from Apapa and then go from there to Ojota and you link a third mainland, I mean a fourth mainland bridge. That is how to solve the problem. Because this is a gateway to the West African region. If people cannot go from here to West Africa, forget about foreign investments. This is how we get foreign investment now. Construct the road. 
order the equipment and gadgets to be controlling who is entering and leaving the country. So you'll be making money. The border alone can bring in nothing less than 5 trillion naira. Under our government, we'll be generating 5 trillion naira from this place. That is more than half of the national budget. So that we have money to pay for the education of our children. We have money to pave our roads. We have money to take care of our elders. We have money to give scholarship to our children. That is what we want to do in this country. Sometimes when I speak about this, some people say, maybe, you know, you should talk now, you are angry. No, anybody that is not angry with the condition of Nigeria, there's something wrong with the person. That's the truth. You have to be angry because this is not a country. The way they are running this place is not a country. Not only do we go to Balaji, we went to Ajegunle the other day. It took us three hours to get out of Ajegunle. And ladies and gentlemen, any country that refuses to take care of kids, the young people, they are opening a prison for them. That's why they are refusing to make investments in education. That's why they are refusing to make investment in all the things that would have made our lives very easy. Everything that is wrong with Nigeria is deliberately done by the leaders. And I will ask for a request too from Nuri. We want to debate the other candidates. I was excluded from the debate. Because they know that as fellas we will open their nyash <laughs> on national TV. We want Nuri to also join the call for our inclusion in the debate. Because even by their own admission, we are the most popular new party in Nigeria. They did a poll online, we came hot behind ABC and PDP. They still remove our name. They went and put some youth there who are not even campaigning as we speak now. Some of these young people who they claim and who they put on the debate, they don't know where Iba is. Talkless of Dara. I have been to 32 states in nine months in Nigeria. If you add visitation to all these corners in Lagos, probably I have been to over 150 places in nine months. Even President Buhari has not been to up to 50 states since he's been the president of Nigeria. And I don't have a private jet. I don't have a presidential jet. I drove by roads to most of these places. In some places, I'm stuck in traffic for 6 to 12 hours. the people of Nigeria, and contrary to what they are telling us, that maybe Nigerians are used to suffering. Nobody can be used to suffering. It's not possible. Suffering is not part of how we are made. People are looking for a way out of suffering. Even the not that they want to make you believe that, oh, not others like the way things are because they are the ones in power. They know that they are not in power. Is the elites, the one percent people that the elite. Nigeria is divided into two. There's liability and there are assets. <laughs> one percent of Nigerians are controlling all of Nigerians' assets. Ninety-nine percent are controlling the liabilities. So when it is time to suffer, it goes to the ninety-nine percent. When it's time to enjoy, it goes to one percent. When it's time to buy jets, it goes to one percent. When it's time to be sick, it goes to 99%. When there is time for you know, uh, prosperity, it goes to 1%. When it's time for poverty, it goes to 99%. When it is time for ignorance, it goes to 99%. When it's time for high quality education, it goes to 1%. When it is time for great health, in hospitals abroad, it goes to 1%. When it is time for sickness, it goes to 99%, epidemic. When it's time to live in mansions, it goes to 1%. When it's time to be homeless, it goes to 99%. Better education. Yes. When it's time for allowances, big, big allowances, it goes to 1%. When it's time for no payment of salaries, 99%. When it is time for big food on the table, it goes to 1%. When it's time for hunger, it is allocated to 99%. It is time for the 99% to rise up and claim their rightful place. That is where I will end my
Greatest Mauritians. Allah is the greatest. Greatest Mauritians. Um, as we thank you for coming, we are going to add prayers to what you give you. Because uh, silver or gold, we have none. But um, as a faith based organization, uh, Dua, that is prayer, is our strength. And um, I'm going to seek for uh, the support of our Imam in one minute to pray for uh, Mr. Shogore. Not only him, but all those who are in his team. Journalists, comrades who are with him, uh, they believe in him, that is why they are here. Uh, the same thing that members of Muruk have been doing for me is what they are doing for him. For Allah's protection for them, or for Allah's blessings and uh, his guidance. Please. Thank you very much. Um, before, I forgot before I prayed, I want to respond to that world request, yes. which is cardinal. Yes. Uh, Murik, like I said, will be behind you. Uh, we will visit, uh, we had this story of you not being allowed to participate in the, in the debate. It pained me. And uh, I wasn't sure how the debate was being organized until I read that while the debate was being held, you were outside. No, they haven't even really heard the one that I'm supposed to be involved in. Okay. It's coming out on January 19th. And we have, uh, we actually took them to court. Very good. But we need more voices come on our side. What we need is a chance on national TV to explain the difference between ourselves and the people who put Nigeria in the condition it is today. And that is what they are trying to escape from. They have done a vice presidential debate and because of our absence, it's almost looked as if the young candidates are not prepared to confront the old ones. But the presidential debate is what we are waiting for on January 19th. And we have asked them that they should include us in there so that we come and espouse our own ideas as well. Let Nigerians then judge after that. So there is still time to have you on board and they put in pressure. We're going to call for level Playing field, yes, field. Yes. But that's their but first that's, rigging. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to do that, and uh, we are going to do follow-ups from uh, from all angles. Yeah, right. and of God, within with everything we can do within our power, we welcome you. And we thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir.
this uh, greatest Mauritius. Mauritius. Allah is the greatest. Greatest Mauritius. Yeah, oh, yes. 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 Soli, 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 solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. We shall always sign for our rights. Soli, 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 solidarity forever. Be organized, you like that.